Well guys, we are back and we need to revisit a topic that I have covered on my channel over the years, but there are some updates and that is with regards to those collagen peptide supplements that people claim up and down all around town are the secret for firm, plump, glowing skin, long, strong, healthy hair, fewer wrinkles, better skin hydration, better elasticity. If it sounds too good to be true, generally it's probably not true. However, there there are some clinical studies backing up collagen peptide supplementation. In this video, we are going to talk about how these work, how they differ from collagen in animal-based foods like bone broth, gelatin, and we're gonna be talking about the newer non-animal alternative. Veclol, yes, a vegan collagen biomimetic supplement, not just a collagen booster mix of amino acids. There are many different collagens throughout the human body. It's a critical building block for skin, joints, bone, and connective tissue. But with age, our natural collagen production declines. In our skin, this leads to wrinkles, loss of elasticity. So that's why many people are turning to collagen peptide supplements in the hope of improving collagen production and improving the appearance of the skin. There's also a lot of interest for collagen peptide supplementation for various joint concerns, but I'm not really going to be talking about that today because on this channel, we're pretty much focused on skin health. So first of all, there are a lot of different sources of collagen that we can get in our diet or from supplements. Hydrolyzed collagen peptides and supplements come from animal sources, but now there's a non-animal based option, Vecalol. You also have animal-based foods like bone broth, gelatin, but here's the important part. When it comes to improving collagen production in the skin, not all of these different forms are the same. They don't all do what you are hoping they do. In other words, not all of them have been shown to improve collagen production in the skin. And why might that be? Let's get into it. Gelatin is partially denatured collagen that thickens when it's heated. Bone broth, on the other hand, contains a complex mixture of collagen fragments fragments, minerals, and amino acids, but neither is hydrolyzed into collagen peptides like you might encounter in a collagen peptide supplement. Hydrolyzed collagen peptides and supplements contain small fragments of hydrolyzed collagen peptides. These behave very differently when ingested compared to the collagen fragments in gelatin or bone broth. And to give you some perspective, there was a study that examined the collagen content of bone broth. They compared the amino acid content of bone broth to collagen supplements, and they showed that bone broth, whether it be homemade or store-bought, contains much lower and highly variable levels of key amino acids like glycine, proline, and hydroxyproline. These are the amino acids that are essential for your skin's production of collagen. So in other words, bone broth is not a reliable source of these therapeutic hydrolyzed collagen peptides. One of the things that people have the most difficult time wrapping their head around is like, how is it that these peptides are absorbed to have any specific effect? Surely they are just digested in our digestive tract by digestive enzymes. Like there's no way that consuming these is any different than eating a wide variety of protein sources. But when you consume hydrolyzed collagen peptides, they're broken down into smaller fragments called di and tripeptides in the gut. These small peptides, for example, glycine, proline, hydroxyproline, a three amino acid peptide, they're actually absorbed intact and they make their way via the bloodstream to your skin where they localize there. And that's been shown in scientific studies. Once localized there, they're thought to stimulate fibroblasts in the skin to produce more healthy collagen. First, they provide the building blocks your skin needs to produce healthy collagen. But second, they actually stimulate fibroblasts in your skin to produce healthy collagen, elastin, as well as hyaluronic acid. Three things that decline with age and are parts of how it is that our skin ends up with wrinkles and visible signs of skin aging. That's all well and good. Cells in a dish type stuff, cool, great, animal-based studies, small animal models, mice, whatever. Uh, cool. But what about actual clinical research on human volunteers? Where do we stand with that? There are actually several studies at this point looking at the consumption of collagen peptide supplements and the outcomes on skin health in human volunteers. Clinical trials and comprehensive reviews show that supplementing with collagen peptides from anywhere from 8 to 12 weeks improves 
skin hydration, elasticity, and wrinkle depth. While that sounds really exciting, it's important to know there are several limitations. The studies are small, eight to 12 weeks is not forever. The studies mostly focus on women between the ages of 30 to 60, and they're using different doses of collagen peptides, different sources, marine, bovine. So it's hard to make conclusions as to the generalizability of these findings. Now, as I pointed out in many of my videos, talking about collagen peptides and other dietary supplement videos, for the most part in the clinical trials and in real world use, because there are a ton of these supplements out there, they appear to be safe. The typical side effects people might encounter with these are bloating, gastrointestinal upset, gastric reflux. Some people have allergies. And of course, if you are allergic, say to fish, then the marine collagen sources would be off limits. While the results are compelling overall, it's important to emphasize that collagen peptides, they are dietary supplements. And dietary supplements are not regulated for purity like medications. So you can potentially run into contaminated products. They're not held to the same standards as like ibuprofen that you pick up in the drugstore as far as disclosing the dose, disclosing side effects, even establishing a safe or effective dose. Because as I pointed out already, we don't really know what the best dose, the best delivery form of these are. Not to mention, we don't really know how generalizable the results are to everyone. Now, when it comes to collagen peptide supplements, they come for the most part from animal sources, marine sources, bovine sources. However, this leads to some limitations. Some people are gonna have allergies and not be able to tolerate these. And some people do not want to consume any animal derived ingredients. Plus it can be a bit of a costly endeavor to collect, purify these collagen peptides from animal sources, not to mention the cost of raising the animal, etc. For the longest time, there was no non-animal based collagen peptide supplement out there. Now we have something um, under the trademark of Vecalol. So Vecalol is a non-animal biomimetic collagen supplement alternative, I guess you could say, to the animal-derived peptides. From an environmental standpoint, it is a lot more friendly. And of course, people who don't want to consume animal products or are allergic to them, then, you know, this is a compelling alternative. Less costly and also, you know, avoids the issues around animal allergies and just not wanting to consume animal-based ingredients. In lab studies, this trademark Vecalol increased collagen production in fibroblasts like 135%. So they were like, wow, what happens when we give it to human volunteers? And in an eight-week clinical human trial, participants saw wrinkle depth reduced by 32.9%, collagen density increasing by 7.7%, skin elasticity improved by 6%, skin texture improved by 13.1%, percent hydration boosted up to six percent and pore size shrunk by 5.6 percent and importantly no safety concerns were reported now this particular vecalol it has some other things in it it has vitamin c it has ginseng and it has some compounds from centella which allegedly are going to also help with collagen production but i don't know i i don't feel as strongly about those other ingredients but i haven't really seen good clinical studies on those ingredients specifically so in other words, this supplement is like a mix of this biomimetic non-animal collagen, vitamin C, ginseng, and compounds from Centella. Importantly though, the eight-week study did compare it to uh, animal-based collagen peptides. And so you're getting the same outcomes with, with this non-animal option, but it's one eight-week study, right? So I would say more research is needed, especially given the fact that this newer supplement, the Vecalol, has some other ingredients in it. And it's unclear to me if those could have any unwanted side effects in people, like interact with medications. Eight weeks, no side effects in the group that was studied, cool. But like the population at large, more side effects would likely emerge. Like how does it compare to the animal-based ones? Is it, does it have a better side effect profile or does it have, you know, more concerning side effects? At any rate, the clinical study is compelling and suggests that this might be the future for a non-animal-based collagen supplement that can improve wrinkles, elasticity, pore size, and skin hydration, all of which are things that kind of go a little downhill when we get up there in age. So in summary, gelatin, animal-based foods, bone broth, not the same as hydrolyzed collagen peptides. 
bone broth is inconsistent and has a low amount of the important amino acids for healthy collagen production. Hydrolyzed collagen peptides work because they are taken up in the digestive tract intact. They do make their way via the bloodstream to the skin to improve collagen, elastin, and hyaluronic acid production. And there's clinical evidence that they improve the visible signs of skin aging, wrinkles, improved moisture content. And now we have a non-animal based collagen biomimetic supplement that likewise shows a lot of promise, but as with the animal based collagen peptides, and I really think more research is needed, but that hasn't stopped these supplements from exploding and people just go ahead and take them. And they really do anecdotally report that they're great. I would just like more research because the thing about these is that I do believe these have the potential to work, but they also have the potential not to work in specific groups of people. I would really like to know who those people are for which these will not work. Why would a supplement company bother to look into that? Because they want to make it seem as if their supplement is good for anyone, right? When in reality, I imagine that there are lots of demographics out there for which these supplements are not going to do anything but waste your money. <laughs> All right, guys, that is a update with regards to the almighty collagen peptide, hydrolyzed collagen peptide supplements. They're not going anywhere. And if you saw one of my very first videos commenting on these, I was a lot more skeptical, but we do have more papers coming out. So it's hard to argue that they don't do anything, but I still maintain that we need more research to really say for sure who would benefit from these, what the best form is, what the best route is, and importantly, how safe they are. What side effects should we be on the lookout for above and beyond what we already know? Bloating, digestive upset, gastrointestinal reflux, and allergic reactions. Now, if you guys like videos on dietary supplements for the skin, um, hello, I have a whole playlist, a whole playlist on dietary supplements. So go there. There are tons of videos on all different types of dietary supplements, okay? So pick and choose what videos you want to watch. I'll link some in the description box as a pinned comment. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.